Hi guys, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and this short video is going to deal with how to estimate the mean of a grouped frequency distribution. Uh, this video is uh, a follow-on from a previous video uh, where we, we looked at a, a data set raw data set and from the raw data set we went through the steps or the procedure required to construct what's known as a group frequency distribution uh, and from that previous video we constructed this following group frequency distribution where we had one two three four five six classes uh, the class width is 13 in each case uh, and the number of observations in each interval was 4 10 12, 14, 9 and 3, giving us a total of 52 observations. Okay, so what we'd like to do now is we'd like to uh, find what the average or what the mean of this particular group frequency distribution is. And let's just keep in mind that we have a formula to estimate the average of a group frequency distribution. We're going to assume the data is, is sample data. Okay, so we're going to assume uh, the data is sample data and the formula that we're going to use the formula that's going to allow us to calculate the mean of this particular distribution is x bar which represents the mean is equal to the sum of the frequencies times the observations divided by the sum of the frequencies okay let's just keep in mind that this sigma notation when we're dealing with tables sigma is just the process of summing up a column in the table that we've been provided or the table that we have constructed so to calculate the mean we need two numbers we need a numerator and we need a denominator the denominator is straightforward it's simply the sum of the frequency column in our group frequency distribution the frequency column is labelled by a small f and the sum of all the values here uh, is 52 so this value 52 is simply the sum of the frequencies okay so to calculate the mean of our distribution we have half of this solution it's 52 for the denominator here okay so what we need to calculate next is sigma fx now to calculate sigma fx we need to have a column in our table called fx now we don't have a column in our table called fx uh, to construct a column labeled fx we would have to have a column labeled f which we do have but we also need to have a column labeled x which represents a representative observation from our classes so let's construct a column called x Okay, which in our case is simply going to be the midpoints of each of our classes. To calculate the midpoints, to calculate the midpoints of our classes, okay, we simply add the lower bound to the upper bound of the class and we divide by two. So for example, the midpoint of the class that has a lower bound of five and eighteen will be five plus eighteen divided by 2 which gives us a value of 23 divided by 2 which is approximately equal to or is equal to 11.5 so what we're going to assume is that this 11.5 represents an observation in this particular interval and we're going to assume that these four observations were 11.5 so we're going to put 11.5 in here okay then what we do is for the next x value in the next interval it's the lower bound plus the upper bound divided by 2 so it's 18 plus 31 gives us a value of 49 49 divided by 2 is going to be 24.5 okay and what we can probably notice is because our intervals are of width 13 and the upper bound of this class is the same as the lower bound of this class these particular values are simply going to be a distance of 13 apart so the next value in the distribution is going to be 27.5 to get that it's simply the lower bound plus the upper bound divided by 2 the next value is 50.5 which is simply 44 plus 57 divided by 2 the next value is 63.5 
Once again, that's the lower bound plus the upper bound divided by 2. The next value is 70 plus 83 divided by 2, which gives us 76.5. Okay, so now we have these midpoints of the classes. So now we can construct a column.